This video was brought to you by Control Laboratorium, University of Indonesia. Hello, welcome to the first module of Lab Course of Control System titled Basics of Control Systems Engineering. The objective of this first module is only to introduce you to the world of control system, only the tip of the iceberg, and let you do analysis of the control system itself. This first module will be divided into four sections. As you can see, we are here on the tip of the iceberg. This is what we will learn in this video. The first one of the four is the overview of the control system. After that, we will move on to the analysis part. We will be interested on three things to be analyzed. First, the stability. Second, the transient response. And finally, the steady state error of the system. The book that we will use as reference is Norman S. Nees' Control Systems Engineering. We heavily recommend you to read the book. Read the book, seriously, because the book itself is well-structured so it's some kind of self-explaining and will help you a lot. I think that's it. So let's get started. And welcome to the adventure of control systems engineering. Hello, welcome back again. In this section, we will walk you through the overview of control system. Let's start with a definition, shall we? A control system is a process that has an input and an output. According to Norman S. Nees on his book, a control system is a process assembled to desired output given specified input with desired performance. Control system may consist of a bunch of smaller subsystems. As we can see here, inside the process block or control system block, there is two additional subsystems. The first one is a controller and the second is called a plant. This is the simplest form of a control system block. Next up, let's look at an example. Here, we have a case of a lift or an elevator. Say that we're currently on the first floor of a building, and we want to move up to the fourth floor. What we will do to get to the fourth floor is obviously pressing the four number button on the control panel, and the elevator will move with a response that is not immediate, but with a transient response. As we can see here in the axis, the x-axis is time, and the y-axis is the floor. Our desired input is the fourth floor. When we give our system our desired input, we see that the system, on the first case, behaves smoothly. This is a pretty good behavior because the elevator does not move too quickly or oscillate. Just imagine that you are inside an oscillating elevator that moves up and down rapidly. And finally, the third curve is the ideal response. Why is it ideal? Because there is hardly any steady state error there. No matter how smooth your elevator moves, if you want to move to the fourth floor and it stops at third, that's, that's no good. We need to move to the fourth floor. Do you remember how our definition of control system to achieve desired output given specified input and desired performance? Desired output and desired performance. All right, so we already talked about a transient response, how the system behaves in a transition from a state to another state. In our case, from the first floor to the fourth floor. In this case, it behaves nicely in transition from the first floor to the fourth floor. We also talk about steady state error, the difference between the desired output and actual output in steady state condition. There's one more thing. It's called stability. We will not talk about transient response and steady state error further if the system is not stable. So later on, we will talk about system stability first before talking about transient response and steady state error. Let's talk about the types, shall we? The types control systems divide into mainly two types. The first type is open loop and the second is closed loop. The difference is obvious and so does the benefits. As we can see, the first graphic is the open loop control system and the second one is the closed loop one. We can see here that closed loop is equipped with a feedback or with a sensor that detects the output response of the system and compares it with the input. This makes the closed loop system more accurate and definitely more robust. The def downsides of closed loop systems are that it's complicated to design and construct and also require more maintenance. For open loop system, it is the other way around. It is simple in terms of design, construction, and maintenance, but it's not as accurate as closed loop system and is pretty much unreliable in more complex situations. 
However, choosing between the two appropriate control systems is essential in your career as a control system engineer. Let's look at an example of open loop and closed loop systems. Take an autonomous car. Say you are assigned to task a task to program an autonomous car so the car stops exactly 20 meters in front of the wall. The course is a straight line lane, so we wouldn't have to worry about turning left or right. The obvious solution is to give the car a command to move at a particular speed for a particular duration. Say we want the car to move 10 meters per second for 8 seconds. Well, in an ideal world, that works because there's no obstacle. But let's change the case a little bit. Say I add a little bump on the road. As you might have suspected, even in the ideal world, our previous solution does not work. The car will not stop exactly 20 meters in front of the wall. Well, what can we do now? Obviously, the car needs to adapt to the situation. We can, for example, recalibrate the duration, the speed. After ex several experiments, the car will stop exactly at 20 meters. But is it cumbersome if we change the environment again? Say we add lots of speed bumps this time. So the solution does not work. The other solution is to add a radar or a sensor in front of your car to measure the distance to the wall. Instead of giving speed and duration command, now your command will be like, oh, move at a particular speed as long as the sensor reading is greater than 20. If it is 20, do a hard stop. Trust me, it will work. For both cases, smooth and bumpy road, the car will stop exactly 20 meters in front of the wall. Even better, you can easily adjust the response. Say you are currently set the car speed to 10 meters per second, and you want it to move faster. Without worrying the end result, you can adjust the speed to move faster. And that is the benefit of closed loop system.